Welcome to the Legionary. So far on the Pila Fasata, we've uh, we've pared it down, so we've got it down to uh, four four stakes out of one out of one branch, and um, now we're going to cut the notches. So I've darkened, I've coloured this in here so you can see where the notch is going to be. So we see this. If you hold it up by profile, you've got the the outside here would be the bark. And then these two sides are the inside, and this would be the centre of, uh, of the of the tree of the branch here. And so we're going to cut, as per the archaeological record, we're going to cut the notch in here. So the notch will be facing the centre of the uh, of the actual um, tree or the branch. Um, this uh, archaeologists, when they when they studied this, they were able to ascertain that this had been sawn. So we have to saw down here and then across here. Obviously, as, as commented on in my previous video, <laughs> this is a lot harder than it looks because the saw will bind in this. Uh, on cross cut is fine, but when we do, when we do a rip cut here, uh, it will tend to bind. So I'll, I'll see. I was hoping to amaze you with the childlike simplicity with which I'm able to reproduce a Roman artifact. However, they would have other ideas. <laughs> so, be amazed by my skills. So this is obviously really easily done because it's cross cutting. Uh, so I'm cutting across the fibers. No problem, this has been sharpened. Um, where I'm going to experience trouble is trying to cut down. So now I've got to make a cut that's going to follow the fibres. And my... Uh, there we go. So, yeah, so far I'm following the lines. This is a lot better than earlier on. So there we go. So this is... Just getting to the end here. Cutting the notch out. So there you go. See so you new thought I just dressed up as a Roman. Oh no. Success at last. So we can see that on this particular um, peeler uh, we've been successful. So I've been able to cut out a, a clean notch. That makes sense. That that worked well uh, on the previous piece of wood. Um, I started off on a on a knot, which didn't help. On this one, it's a fairly straight grain, and there was no no nasty surprises hidden in there. So yeah, so far so good. Um, this end might be a different story because it's a bit knotty. So we'll see uh, we'll see where the position comes. So it's about ten centimeters from the end of the stake. And the, and the the opening, well, what I'd call sort of like the bird's mouth there, is um, uh, cut is about 10 centimetres also. So I've, I've made the mechie distant to, just to balance it out, and that's how it looked to me in, in the picture using the, uh, uh, using the photographs and the, uh, the measurements provided. So that is the first uh, notch. So this is obviously um, used to then hammer it into the ground. This is what we believe. And the archeologists know this because they found that all these fibers, these wooden fibers on, on this notch had been crushed. And so they, they realized that they'd, they'd, they'd driven it into the ground using, a, uh, using this as, the, uh, as a point of impact for either a mattock or, um, or just the back of an ax as I just did there. All right, come with me on a journey of discovery. Um, so this is notch here, bring it up to the camera. So I'm going to cut with the axe this time. So I'm going to cut this notch out here. If you can see that, the dark shaded area. So it's, it's on the opposite side to the, uh, to the original notch. So uh, this one was cut uh, using either a knife, a chisel or an axe, we're not sure. So we're going to try it with the axe. And failing that, we will uh, use something sharper. So. 
okay so we've got we've got the slot uh, the uh, top down bit cut so now I'm going to cut across the fibers so that's quite that's quite messy there I'll see if I can clean that up there we go There we go, that's more or less there. You can see that. So that's a smaller notch. There's a nice wide one there. You get purchase on this one's a bit smaller. Um, so two notches, one cut by a saw, one cut by, a, by an ax. Could have equally been done by a chisel uh, or even a, a sharp knife. Now I'm gonna make both ends pointy. Uh, this should be the uh, fairly uh, straightforward part, so I'll, I'll cut from about here to the end and then here and just end it all in, in a point, so I'm just cutting, cutting the sides off. Uh, this is the, probably the most straightforward, straightforward part of the, uh, of the job. But these, were, these obviously lined the bottom of a, of a trench. So it's sort of like a V-shaped uh, trench, so quite steep on the sides. So the intention is for you to either fall into it or to be, you know, sort of be delayed and, and, and trapped in it. It's an obstacle, an approach obstacle. So yeah, we've got the sort of your, your first point there, and then we're going to do the same on the uh, on the opposite side. So yeah, approach obstacles are intended to delay and uh, fix you in, in a location to make you vulnerable to, uh, to, uh, to the defending force. And the site they were defending, uh, apparently in Badems, or, or uh, sorry, the uh, uh, Bloskov, um, it appears to have been a mine. They found some uh, slag heaps, uh, so they, they believe it was a mining facility. They found obviously slag heaps and some mine, uh, mine shafts. Uh, although that said, I don't think they've properly dated the mine shafts, so we're not sure whether they are uh, um, whether they're Roman in origin. Obviously, the Romans were great miners, so uh, it could well have been the case. And you want to protect your mine site, so there we go. There you have a uh, pila fasata. Pila obviously meaning stake and fasata meaning uh, ditch. Uh, so yeah, a ditch stake. And this would have gone in the bottom. Uh, this end was hammered into the ground. And there would have been one towards uh, the enemy, one straight up, and one towards the defending forces. And so these were, that was, that was the configuration. So one towards the enemy, one straight up, and one towards the defending forces all the way along the ditch. So that's quite a formidable uh, obstacle. If you get enough of them in there, uh, that's going to be uh, quite a, quite the trip hazard. <laughs> I think you'll agree. <laughs> so there we go, Pila Fossata. Let's see if I can hold both of those up so you can admire uh, my skilled workmanship. Obviously not a touch on the Romans, but it just goes to show that something is... Um, now something as simple as this is actually uh, is actually quite complex, and when it comes to actually putting them together, uh, unless you've got experience with uh, you know in green woodworking or just woodworking in general, it's it's not a, it's not as easy as it as it looks. And so again, for me, this is testament to the to, to the Romans' uh, ingenuity, but also the attention to detail the fact that they took the time to lay stakes as small as this in such a tight configuration to defend a building it, it, it's a lot of it's a lot of manpower it's a lot of time but once it's in place it's extremely effective uh, to actually negotiate this kind of um, this kind of obstacle is, is difficult and uh, one thing I'd also one thing is worthy pointing out is the fact that when the site was abandoned they just filled the ditch in because it just it would just take them too long in man hours to to go in there and retrieve all the stakes when they could just reproduce this at, at another site they had the manpower they had they had the means but they didn't want to waste it doing needless tasks 
defending and setting up defences with him was important. Tearing them down was just a case of filling in the ditch and then uh, burning down the, uh, the wooden buildings so that no one could occupy them. Uh, obviously, that, that's always a question is, that why did the Romans burn things down and, and, and destroy uh, these camps? Well, because they didn't want the enemy then taking up that position and using their own fortifications against them. So, there we go. Pila Fasata. Thanks for watching, and um, I'll finish uh, two more, and then we'll take I'll take some take some photos and uh, and uh, put them up on the uh, put them up on the website for you to uh, to compare with the uh, with the Roman originals and uh, see uh, see what you think.